Hey guys, Don Morris here, and I want to talk to you uh, parents with young children a little bit about macrodactyly. Um, I remember that as I was growing up, one of the things that would happen is it seemed like my hand didn't really change. And then all of a sudden I would notice that there was a change and I really had no way of going back and seeing is this something new or did this develop slowly and I didn't really see it that quickly. Um, I remember one day I was sitting in a biology classroom when I was probably 20 years old and um, I noticed that there was a, another branch of tumor up in this finger and that's the first time I noticed that. And I have no idea how long that branch of tumor had been there. Um, I went ahead and grew up. You can see I did lose the finger to macrodactyly, but I went ahead and grew up and I became a scientific researcher, not in this field, but in other fields. And I wanted to talk to you parents about some scientific research principles and some ways to document for science, but also for yourself, what's going on with your child and with their hand. And I've created a little documentation kit that you can use if you want to. Um, if you would be willing to share that documentation with me or others like me later on, we may be able to find out all kinds of things about macrodactyly, put more than one person's experience together. Um, on the other hand, if you want to just use it for yourself and use this to help your doctor uh, to help make accurate diagnoses and help maintain your own records, that's okay too. The most important thing is going to be to be consistent about doing this. So I've got these sheets and there's four of these sheets in the kit. The only difference is metric versus English and what resolution they're at. But those grids in the background are going to help a, a researcher to be able to actually make measurements and see things. Uh, otherwise, it's just going to be your phone and it can be your cell phone camera if that's what you have. Um, all you need to do is write down what is the patient's name. In this case it would be me, Don Morris, and I'm gonna go ahead and put the date although I could also put my age and just to show how uh, absent-minded a professor I am I don't know the date it's 1126 21 Okay, I'm an American, so I write it in that order, and I've got my date, and I've got my name across there, and now I'm going to show you what this uh, piece of paper looks like. You can see I put my name across the top, I put the date across the top, and I'm using the 0.25 by 0.25 or quarter inch grid for what I'm doing. I could use whatever grid I wanted to use, but uh, the English grids, the inch grids are probably better used for Americans who have inch size paper. And the uh, last two grids are metric sizes and I'd probably go with those if I were in um, some country that didn't do that. The key here is we want to get that hand up there where you can see the affected digits and we're going to go ahead and we're going to take a picture of what that is and uh, it doesn't really matter that the entire page is in the picture honestly what we really want to make sure is in the picture is we want to make sure that the label is in the picture and we want to make sure that the affected areas of the hand are in the picture and that that grid is in the background because using that grid a researcher is going to be able to take a look and they're going to actually be able to get approximate measurements on just about anything if that's something that they want to do so this would be fine this would be fine this would be fine um, whatever it is that we need to do and show we want to go ahead and be able to see that up in there. If you've got an unusual case, you may want to make several pictures. You may want to take maybe one picture of the hand in this direction, one picture of the hand in this direction, possibly even a picture of the hand in this direction. Uh, it just depends on what your case is. For just general documentation, you want to do the same basic thing over and over again. Um, and again, most common uh, or the most frequent you would need to do this would be once a week, but this is only an extremely fast developing cases when a child is young. For most of us, once a month between the times when they're zero and uh, 24 months, zero and two years old would be good once a month, and then once a year probably after they reach that age. Uh, and just keep that in a nice record um, and you'll be able to see a lot about what's happening inside or with the growth of that particular case. Uh, keep these, keep all those photos in a nice folder and uh, you can take them with you when you go visit your doctor and you may be able to, your doctor may be able to see things that they wouldn't be able to see without those. And again, if you share them with the rest of the world, we may be able to find out more about this disease um, so that we'll have fewer people that end up losing the finger like I did. Uh, so thanks for uh, all your work and hang in there. Uh, macrodactyly is uh, not a death sentence. 
and we know that. So hang in there.